Hello friends, we are still not employed by a Fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do non-overlapping intervals problem and this problem is actually very similar to merge interval problems and insert interval problems. I have solved both of these problems and I will be posting their links in the description so you can check it out from there. Like though this problem seems like it has not been asked by many companies, actually this can be a very interesting uh, post question after these two interview questions. So uh, usually like all the interval problems, they are done in sync. And even for this particular problem, if we see, it has been asked by tech giants like Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, Bloomberg, Apple, Oracle, Google, ByteDance, which is TikTok and Snapchat. And these are my dream companies. So I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code medium problem. And we are basically given an array of intervals where every single entry has a starting point and an ending point that represents that particular interval. Now our aim is in this problem is that we need to return that how many minimum numbers of intervals that if we remove uh, from this given original input, if we remove those, then the remaining result should be uh, such that all the intervals becomes non overlapping. So we need to return the number of intervals that we need to remove. So let's try to understand this problem with an example that is given over here. And over here we are given some set of intervals and let's try to plot them on this given uh, number series and see that what would be the answer. Okay, so after plotting all of these, our aim is to return, our aim is to see that, okay, if there exists an overlap inside this given interval, uh, we need to return the minimum number of intervals such that all the remaining intervals becomes non overlapping. So over here we can clearly see that okay there exists an overlap be between these points and the overlap is actually mainly caused by uh, because of this particular interval and these two intervals. So our aim is to remove the minimum number of intervals that uh, that basically allows all the remaining intervals to become non overlapping. So in this case, if we simply remove uh, this particular interval that starts at position number one and ends at position number three, this big one. So if we get rid of this particular big, big interval, we will have a result where all the intervals, they are actually not in collision with each other and they are not overlapping with each other. Over here, we can see that they, uh, they actually connect at some point, but that is not an overlap. Like I know that in previous questions, we, we used to consider this as an overlap, but you can confirm this with your interviewer that with what approach they want to go. So in this case, we only get rid of this one interval that was existing. And because we get rid of one, we will return one that in this given input, if we simply remove one interval, we would, we can determine that, okay, there exists uh, a one interval such that uh, if we remove that, then all the other intervals becomes non overlapping. Now to generate the optimal solution, the main thing is that we will have to determine that whether there exists an overlap inside the given interval or not. Now, the, if the previous examples we saw, the input was already sorted, but in the problem statement, it is nowhere written that the in input should be sorted. So input could be something like this, where everything is different value. Now the thing is, first of all, over here, we need to determine that what are the intervals that are actually causing the overlap and then we can determine that what which one should be removed and whatnot blah 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 what should be this strategy for that now the thing is uh, if we plot these uh, this given input on side uh, on uh, a number system uh, we will get a result like this over here we can clearly see that there exists a conflict between uh, these two intervals uh, which is represented over here the thing is how we were able to identify that there exists a conflict we were able to identify it because the starting point of this particular uh, interval was actually falling between uh, the two values of some already existing interval. So that is the condition we will have to determine if we want to find that whether there exists an overlap or not. So over here, suppose we get at value number five and we want to check that whether five has an overlap, uh, has an overlap anywhere. So five, we will have to check all the other intervals. So five does not exist between this two to four. So there is no overlap with this one. It also does not exist between eight to nine. So there is no overlap and it does not exist between one and three. So that's why there is no overlap. So now we are, we are saying that, okay, this five, uh, five, seven has no overlap with any other uh, interval. 
Now we check for this value number 2 to 4. So again we check the starting point for the value number 2. So value number 2 does not fall between 8 to 9. So there is no overlap. But 2 actually falls between this 1, 2, 3 because 1 is actually less than the value 2 and 2 is actually less than the value number 3. So which means 2 falls between this interval. So that's why the interval 2 to 4 and 1, 2, 3 are in between uh, an overlap and then we will have to take care of that scenario. Now, do you see a problem with this one? And the problem is uh, that I can see is that for every single value, we will have to check all the other remaining values that whether there exist an overlap or not. And that actually causes big O of n square time. And this is unnecessary work. Like even just to determine that whether there exists an overlap or not, we are actually doing big O of n square work, which is like pointless. Uh, there, there exists a better approach and the better approach is uh, that if we sort the given input and then we sort them based on their starting values, things becomes lot e a lot easier. So let's see that what should be the sorted array. Now we have sorted this given original set of intervals and now we have all the values sorted. So now if we see, if we want to identify that whether there exists an overlap, all we need to do is we just need to compare any two adjacent values. And the moment we compare any two adjacent values, we can directly tell that whether there exists a conflict between them or not. How can we tell them is that we only need to check that whether the starting point of any uh, second interval compared to its previous interval, if that is smaller, then we know that there exists a conflict. So in this case, we can say that between this 1 and 3 and 2 and 4, there exists a conflict because this particular interval ends at value number 3 and this particular interval starts at value number 2. So that's why there is a conflict. Uh, meanwhile, if we see over here, this particular uh, interval ends at, value num ends at value number 4 and this one starts at value number 5. So that's why there is no conflict. So this is a very easy way for us to determine that whether there exists a conflict or not. And if we see in terms of time complexity, the time complexity for the sorted operation uh, takes only big O of n log n which is a big improvement compared to the previous time complexity for this one, which was big of n square. Okay, now we have determined that uh, how to identify overlap. The question is that how to find that uh, what should be the most number of nodes that we will have to remove and uh, what should be the strategy for it. So essentially there can be three different scenarios at any given moment. The first scenario is that between two intervals, there does not exist an overlap. So if there does not exist an overlap, there is no need for removal. So we don't need to remove at anything. So we are good in this case. This is like the most beautiful thing. The second scenario is that we are given one interval that is clearly bigger compared to the second interval. So essentially we can say that the second, this second interval is actually subset of this given bigger interval. So in this case, things actually becomes pretty easy for us. All we need to do is that we simply need to remove the bigger interval because there is a conflict between these two intervals right now, which we can see, but there could be possible possibility that there might exist some other interval, something like this. So say in this scenario, if we got rid of this interval, we still have to we will still find ourselves to ha be having conflict between these two intervals and again in order to resolve that we will have to remove this one as well but rather doing this suppose in this scenario we only had uh, two intervals like this and originally if we just got rid of this bigger interval then immediately even though there exists another interval somewhere down which was actually causing an overlap between this original interval still we would we will have to perform less remove operations so that is why uh, the strategy should be that always remove the bigger interval now the question comes in scenario like this where the starting point of one interval is actually falling before and the starting point of second interval actually falls somewhere in between so what should be our approach in this scenario and in this scenario as well uh, what i'm suggesting is that we remove the interval that has the longer uh, end point essentially if we at any point identifies ourselves in this kind of scenario our strategy should be to remove the end to remove the interval with the end point that is greater so suppose we consider that uh, the starting point for this interval is actually 1 2 3 and suppose we consider that uh, starting point for this interval is 2 2 4 
so in this scenario the I, the strategy we are going to use is that we are always going to remove the interval 2 to 4 why because the we are going to compare the end values and whichever interval has the greater end value we will decide to remove that particular interval so essentially we are using a greedy approach but by using this greedy approach what we are going to do is that over here we know that for this particular case for this particular interval we only had an interval that was causing an overlap over here but again the same thing could happen that we might have another interval like this where this particular interval was causing an overlap between this and this and also this so immediately remember our input is sorted so we are coming from left to right inside the number sequence so the moment we identify that whatever has the greater end point if we decide to remove that so even over here we already got rid of this one so even over here if there exists another interval that comes after this 1 2 3 still it would not be in overlap with this 1 2 3 and we will have to do less remove operation and this would be our ideal approach if we calculate the time and space complexity uh, basically the time complexity in this case is going to be big o of n log n uh, and why n log n essentially uh, doing this interval converting this interval from a normal input to sorted input takes n log n time and then after that once we have this input given essentially all we need to do is just we have to iterate over the given input once because it is already sorted and then we can perform the remove operation and we can count the number of times we removed any interval so that this second part takes big o of n time so total work we are doing is actually big o of n log n plus big o of n but oh, in general we can write this as big o of n log n and in terms of space complexity we are not using anything extra so we can just say that it's a constant time space complexity uh, at most at most we are just going to use couple of extra uh, variables so first of all we are going to check that if the given uh, intervals is empty so we are going to return uh, zero Okay, if the, that's not the case, we will have to sort the given input and we are going to sort the given input based on uh, the starting values. Okay, after the sorting, we are going to initialize couple of variables. So we are going to keep, an, uh, keep a variable called uh, previous to keep track of the previous element and uh, we will initialize it to zero we are also going to have a variable called count to keep track of the number of elements that we will have to remove so we are also going to initialize it to zero and now we are going to run a for loop that runs over the given sorted input and over here we are going to start it as int i is equal to one because we already have the previous value as zero for the comparison and remember that because the input is sorted at any given moment we are only comparing two adjacent elements inside the given interval so first of all we are going to check that if there exists an overlap between two adjacent elements and if there exists an overlap we are going to check that which element is having the greater end value so we will update the previous counter based on that and if there exists an overlap we are going to increase our count this second if condition dictates that the, if the previous uh, interval is actually greater than the current interval we are at we will have to update the previous counter to next element and in any case we are going to increment our counter count variable and if this is not the case uh, essentially we have found that between two adjacent intervals there does not exist uh, any overlap so we are going to increase our uh, value for previous uh, count previous variable to the current i so that we can use it for further uh, implementation and uh, once we are done with this loop essentially this count variable should have our answer so we can simply return the count variable and uh, this should be our solution let's try to run the code okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit the code okay our solution is working as expected and uh, it's actually pretty efficient in terms of memory usage and even in terms of uh, time complexity it's not that bad compared to other solutions i would be posting this in the comments and you can check it out from there we are not gonna stop till we get into fang and uh, see you in see you next time